Welcome, 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 welcome. How you guys doing out there today? What is up? Hey, how you guys doing out there? Ah, there we go. How you guys doing out there? This is Solar Gray, the cinematic sorcerer. And welcome to the hobby hall. We're so sorry that we're late, everybody. I mean, you know, I could give you a long story about how there was a power outage, which there was, and then the computer had to update, which there was, and how I got up all night, which there was, but no, I'm gonna just take responsibility. I dropped the ball. I am so sorry. So sorry today. But, happy to have you guys here. Happy that everything is going on the show. Let me just make some quick um, find outs, I suppose you can call that. There we go. Yeah, that's... That is what I'm looking at right there. Just kind of going, yep, we're in. We are here. And um, it's good to see everybody. I gotta make sure that my little phone thing is on silent. <laughs> Again, it has been a day. It has been a day. Um, and with that, yeah. There has been some stuff today, I will tell you that, all that jazz. I didn't even get around to properly sharing today's episode, which I'm going to do right now, because that's fun. Um, yeah, so how you guys doing out there? This is Solar Gray, like I said. Oh, we are doing some stuff. We are doing some stuff. We are talking about stuff today. If you guys are here and um you like what's the term i'm looking for um almost there almost there if you like doing crafts and stuff like that um then cool we are here if you guys aren't exactly sure whether or not you guys like um doing crafts that's cool we're here but on this show i'm gonna show you guys how to do this stuff um i'm not gonna say it's cheap and i'm not gonna say it's easy um no no i'm not gonna say that what i am gonna say is um it doesn't have to be super expensive doesn't have to be super elaborate we are all about immersion with all this jazz and um i'm a big fan i really am i'm a big fan of most of the stuff that we do but first let's get down to just a little bit of business here uh like i said we're late so we're gonna make this real quick um if you guys want to be part of the show and i hope that you do um that's really easy all you gotta do is pull up your keyboard okay pull up your keyboard and Send us an email over at backinthedeck at gmail.com. It's B-A-C-K-I-N-T-H-E-D-E-C-K at gmail.com. Um, you can also hit us up on our social media, you know, Instagram, YouTube, or Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and all that stuff. I'm tired <laughs> right now. Um, yeah, you can hit us up on all that. Um, again, I'm a little bit late, so I'm going to give you guys the best show that we can and all that jazz. Now, I appreciate that you guys are here and I have to give my shout outs and talk to you guys about a really quick thing because a lot of people are like, well, I don't know. We like all that stuff. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, we, we like some of the stuff that you talk about and all that jazz, but uh, we don't really like the talking head thing and all that stuff, but that's okay because this is also a podcast. And what do you do with podcasts? Well, you head on over to say like SoundCloud or Apple or anything like that. And all you got to do is look at our archive, pick an episode, listen to it there. Or if you just don't have the time, you can easily download it. That's right. I'm giving you guys the gift of our audio archive so that you guys can listen to us and all that jazz and honestly i just want the community to grow i mean don't get me wrong this is my job this is how i make a living and all that stuff but my main thing is wanting the community to grow i want us to be able to get together know each other um 
and know that we're out there. I mean, I'm a person of color who happens to be a tabletop gamer, and I know I ain't the only one, so let's talk. You know, along with um, LGBTQIA+, along with everybody else that isn't the normal standard type gamers that people expect. You know, we ain't, mouth, we ain't all mouth readers. You know, let, let's let's kill some of them stereotypes because they don't do anyone any good whatsoever. So that is what I'm out there. And if you guys want to help me in my mission to do that, uh, that's easy. All you got to do is head over to patreon.com slash bid underscore p. And um, at that point, you guys can become a decker. If you think that what we are doing and trying to make the community grow and give people stuff to do and reach out to our friends during things like, oh, I don't know, national emergencies and things like that, you know, just to take some of the stress off of living in the world that we live in, regardless of where we are, what we do, or our circumstances of birth, and you think that that is worth more than a packet of cupcakes a month, sign up, be a Decker. And, um, if you guys, ooh, God, no, I almost killed that one there. If you guys um, are really into what we're doing, then join on the higher tiers. Um, the higher tiers really, really help us out. Like, I ended up having to leave my quarantine today to go pick up some materials from the art store. And yeah, the art store, like Michaels and Joann's and stuff like this, because crafting does not require a whole lot of specialty tools, although sometimes they help, I'm not going to lie. Um, but yeah, so with that, I'm going to give a shout out to our queen, Shannon Boom Boom Lay, and of course, our king, you know, our, um, our man that has hit the king tier, Paul Mansfield, and of course, our ace in the hole, Jennifer Crow. Um, I didn't even mean for that to rhyme. It's just how it happened. But I give a shout out to those guys on every single show. So I gotta plug in something over here. Uh, like one of those bloody. Oh, there we go. Yeah, it's like uh, yeah, it really is like one of those bloody um, bloody commercials from the '90s. But yeah, it's a thing. It's it's definitely a thing. And um, we got a lot of stuff today. We have a lot of stuff to talk to you about today. We're going to continue or kind of finish up our our segments on dungeon tiles today. Now, I did a lot of thinking about this, like a lot of thinking. And I'm looking for the merit and the virtue in dungeon tiles. Um, and the truth is, these are not, I repeat, are not, not, uh-uh, nope, not, nine, they are not super duper required um, gaming tools. They're really not. Um, I like having them because they help me with immersion, but a lot of people use what's called theater of the mind when you're playing a tabletop RPG, okay? And with that, it's a whole lot of description, a whole lot of... Um, a whole lot of using your imagination and creating, um, what are we looking for? Um, excuse me, um, creating a landscape in your mind and it's all good stuff. You know, I, I am a really big fan of theater of the mind and honestly, I did a lot of theater of the mind years and years and years and years and years and years and years. And years right but there are some folks there are some folks that really aren't big fans of actually playing the role-playing games i mean there's just a lot of the a lot of people out there that this stuff ain't gonna appeal to and we can't force it on them that's fine you know don't 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 force it if, if it ain't someone's bag it ain't someone's bag but um one of the things i'm big on is having pride in what you do I love writing, and okay, so that is where my love and my jam comes out for um, RPGs. But I'm also a kid who grew up broke. Okay, I, I, I actually grew up poor. Now I'm mainly broke. I mean that's just that's just the real about it. I'm I'm not going BS you on that one. So, what is it that I like about 
dungeon tiles. Well, we'll get to that before we come, um, but before we do that, we're gonna talk about why a lot of people don't like dungeon tiles, okay? Um, most of the time they're expensive. Most of the time you don't ever have enough. I mean, that is, that's a real thing. You know, you might have a layout of a D&D map in your mind, or you might actually have some sort of adventure planned out. Um, and it's a lot easier to draw it out on, um, on a piece of paper. Um, when I first got into gaming all those years ago, I saw so much graph paper being used by folks I didn't know what I was looking at. Um, and the thing is, like, let's take a look at this thing, right? Now this map here, any of these maps, you know, this is graph paper, this was drawn out. Uh, let's see if we can find an easier looking one here. Yeah, there we go. There we go. Yeah, look at that thing. We got all these little squares. It looks like a Pac-Man thing. We got walls over here and it's on a grid and all that stuff. And it's a lot easier to use a picture. I get that. Um, and opposed to setting up dunge dungeon tiles um, before your game or during the game, it can really, really um, hinder um, the flow of the game. It's like, and you guys walk into a dungeon and blah de blah, hurdy gurdy, hurdy gurdy gurdy, gurdy gurdy, and there are inside the dungeon you have um, it's stone floors and walls and stuff like that. And you can say it, but then you gotta pause the game and set all this up. Okay, right now we're looking at some of the ones from Dwarven Forge. And these are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. I mean, there are lots and lots of dungeon tiles here. And some of them have walls, some of them don't. Um, you know, it, it's a really big thing. And some people play with gridded games, some people don't. But this was the thing that I dug, okay? This right here, if you take a look at that, it's a big old dungeon or tavern or something. And it looked really cool to play with that stuff. And I wanted to get into it. I'm like, dude, why am I using graph paper and all that stuff when there's these toys? This is awesome looking. And then I looked into how much they costed. You know, um, and I tell people all the time when it comes to anything that you're putting together, okay, you get what you pay for. That is a huge, huge thing. You really get what you pay for. And by that, I mean, it's simple. Let's take a look at this thing right here. Okay, yeah, let's take a look. Now this is on Etsy, and this is averagely priced, okay? And this is a room, it looks like one, two, three, four, five, six by six. It's got cool walls. Um, let's see, it's from the Dragon Lock system. It's for 28 millimeter, which is a standard size. The squares are about an inch, and it's $25 for one room. That's one room. And if you're an adult and you got um and you got disposable income, sweet. Good for you. If you don't have kids and all that stuff, cool. You're winning, you know, just go through all that stuff. Okay? But when you are looking at setting up just a small dungeon or a cave setup like this guy, um seriously speaking, and I mean this, like Seriously, seriously speaking, um, when you're trying to set this stuff up, hang on, I'm, I'm looking for the one that I got here. Ah, here we go. Yeah. Sweet. Okay. So, when you want to set, yeah, when you seriously want to set up something like this, okay? We've got rooms with walls, all these things. We got hallways, we got this, we got that, we got, I mean, it, it's, it's a lot. 
it is a whole lot to look at and you know why would you set that up you know that is a big question and the answer to why you would set all that stuff up is because it's awesome it looks really cool but if you got kids you got pets um you don't have a lot of time and you don't want to interrupt the workflow um then you have to practice the skill of setting things up really quickly so you don't lose your players and that can be a bit of a pain now the second reason for dungeon tiles um tends to be for um immersion okay and immersion is a really big thing um but immersion with your tabletop miniatures games now we've talked on a lot of our shows about model agnostic games that are big and um like um rangers of shadow deep is still still one of my favorites um and the truth is on that yeah um i can set up my dungeon tiles i can put down my miniatures i can play a game even if it's alone or i can play it with someone else so you know i can have all that stuff but the biggest thing that i like about dungeon tiles is it gives me a cool looking toy set that is modular that means i can use it for different things i can have different setups and stuff like that so what we're gonna do since we spent a little while working on walls and floors and making stuff look like a stone texture and all that stuff we are going to make one more just one more type of dungeon tiles and we're going to do something interesting with these dungeon tiles in the sense of the ones that we are going to make today um are going to be relatively easy and we are going to do measurements but we're not going to cut great okay we're not going to cut great now i'm going to be using some specialty materials today but you guys will be able to do this a a as much as you want using some of the techniques that you found on these videos and other videos um so what we have today is if you guys still have any foam core laying around oh god i forgot it's all uh, yeah, if you guys still have any foam core laying around, um, you can totally use the foam core, all right? Um, if you've got cardboard laying around, you can totally use cardboard. Cardboard, foam core, all works. Now, I am going to be using today what we call in the special effects um, industry, death foam. This is our pink foam. This is home insulation. Um this stuff is illegal in the state of california because of the environmental stuff and we don't have snow in most of california let alone southern california like you know i live in la county as you guys know the wiz the wizard's tower is by the beach it don't tend to snow here by the beach in southern california um we got mountains but yeah, so as far as home insulation goes, this can be found pretty much anywhere else in the country. Um, it's from Corning's. Um, fortunately, here in California, um, in LA, we can get two foot sheets by, or two foot by two foot by one inch sheets. And I used my Proxon cutter on this. Now the Proxon cutter, um, <laughs> sorry, NP City is just going on. Um, a proxon cutter is a hot wire cutter that's really high quality it's a tool all right it's a tool to cut styrofoam be it the type of styrofoam that you get when you buy a new computer or stereo or TV or this home insulation stuff or even the foam core once you peel off the paper okay so um but if foam core is all you can get that's fine what's important is measuring it properly the second thing that I did um, was when I make tiles I like doing a lot of things but one of the things I really want is a little bit of weight okay so I went down to my local big box store in my case it was Lowe's or Home Depot one of the two and they have masonite now this stuff okay I love this stuff love it love it love it okay this stuff is like $18 
for a four foot by eight foot sheet. Um, I tend to get the thin stuff and I catch it on sale for like nine dollars. And this is my secondary go-to thing. And I use this for basing, okay? You don't have to do it, okay? If you've got it, like you guys know this stuff from the back of clipboards, okay? If you've got access to this, use it, it's awesome. If you've got access to say some thinly cut wood, like um, like craft wood that you can get at like an eighth of an inch, or even if you've got access to um, linoleum, um, this is all good, okay? Um, but I like it to have a little weight, and I like being able to hit it against stuff, okay? Because I'm all about storage. Um, I put them in boxes, I put them on shelves, I put them in the cars, I take them to community centers, I take them to stores. So I need these a little bit solid, all right? So what we're gonna do, is we're gonna make some dungeon tiles. And the last thing I got, now I like different textures. I showed you guys the balled up foil technique. Okay, real simple. Take, take a piece of foil, curl it up in a ball, and then rub it on your foam. Just to give texture, make it look like stone. I'm gonna use a specialized thing today from a company called Green Stuff World. Okay, this was like $12, $13. But this gives me a very cool pattern and it lets me get this out of the way because you guys know that this show is in real time. All right. So um, I don't want to I, I don't want to keep you guys here while we wait for glue to dry. I don't want to spend a whole lot of time drawing out grids and then cutting them and then scoring them with a pencil and all that stuff. We've already done that. All right, you can just hit back in the, any of the other Hobby Hall episodes, um, especially if you're a patron, they're in the archives. And um, yes, yeah, seriously, um, you know, look at that stuff. You can see these techniques, but what I'm doing right now is practical application, all right? So let's get to the table, all right? I love going to the table. How's this little thing? Boom, nope, no, 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 wrong one. Uh, boom. Sweet. Okay, so here we are at the table, and yes, I am doing this in real time, you know, so I can say, hey, hey, how you doing? Um, yeah, hey, if you guys don't believe I'm in real time, that's cool. Um, you know, if the chat puts up anything in... You know, if the chat decides, hey, wait, I'm going to test to see if this guy is really doing stuff in real time, feel free. All right. You guys can totally, totally do that. Um, because um, if you guys decide to, where is it? Where is it? Just trying to put up the right chat. Oh, yeah. There we go. Okay. Yeah. If you guys are deciding to do that. Huh. There we go. Yeah. If you guys are deciding to do that. Um, chat, if you guys want to, you can say, hey, do something, and I will do it. Greater than hashtags. Okay, I don't even know what that means. Oh, okay, yeah, see, what we got here in the chat is, you know, we got Vixen down there sending a heart. So here, yeah, have a heart. There you go. Oh, look, we got a little heart. Yeah, heart you too. Oh, wait, er, yeah, that's the, that's the 21st century way of doing it. I'm used to doing it like that. It's a thing. But hey, who cares, right? All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is I have measured all of this stuff out, okay? I've measured these squares to five inches, or, ooh, man, yeah, just totally hit the camera. Um, that's a thing, that's a thing. Okay, yeah, so I have measured these out to five inches, five imperial inches, imperial rex, okay? And I've done the same with these, okay? So these are five inches by five inches. And I tried cutting this five inches by five inches and about as thick as a piece of home court. So just kind of rough measured it so that we're all on the same page. And the first thing I'm going to do is right here in the water, I've got a paintbrush. And here I've got my handy dandy good old wood glue. And I'm going to water this wood glue down just a little bit. And okay, so it spreads a little more evenly. 
Not entirely even, just more even. Okay, there we go. Look at that. See, without the water in it, I'd just be like, <laughs> Okay, so yeah, we're gonna do that. A little more. Now, I really am doing this today. I'm making sure that this is one of the main shows I do this week because we're kind of stuck inside, right? We can't really go outside, can't do a whole lot. And this reminds me of rainy day activities from when I was a kid. Okay, when I was a kid and it would rain, um, we couldn't go outside for recess. Okay, so we ended up having to stay inside doing stuff, all right? So, you know, we had arts and crafts, we had coloring books, all right? <laughs> And, um, yeah, so, there we go, we've got that going, okay, um, now, it's a little bit moist, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna match up two of the corners, because, again, this is gonna, this is gonna be a board, and the dude in me that majored in science is a little bit of a stickler, okay, when it comes to angles. Now, uh, this will not be perfect. But once we've got that going, we are going to push that down and let it dry. And we are going to do that for a lot of them. Now, um, there we go, and boom. Yeah, we're going to do that for a lot of them because, yoink, um, I did a little prep work a little bit earlier because we've got a lot of stuff to make today. So, um, earlier, like last night and earlier today when I was doing a whole bunch of stuff, I made up some other ones. I've already, I've already glued them down so that we don't have to wait for glue to dry because, you know, that's a thing. So, yeah, we're here. Look at all that. Hey, yeah, look at that. So, it's nice and dry. And this is where you would take your... Um, take your stone or your rolled up toilet paper and remember I once told you guys you can use a rock use a rock if you got some if you got a piece of um if you got like say um what am I looking at um a cinder block you know you can break up a piece of the cinder block and you can use that but what I'm doing now is I'm going to use this roller again, the pavement um, roller from Green Stuff World, and I am going to really I'm going to roll it. Roll it, roll it, roll it, roll it, yeah. Roll it out. There we go. Okay. And just a little bit more here. Okay. Now, this is what we're going to do for those people that, um, those people that don't like looking at the grids. Okay. Um, what I have here is a coffee stir because I left my toothpicks on the other side of the room. So I'm just going to bust off a jagged edge and we are going to measure since this is five long. Now, the reason that we do five inches is because I prefer at the end of the day, um, I prefer squares that are one and a quarter inch, okay? One and a quarter inch squares. So, let's see if I'm still good with a camera. Yeah, there we go. Look at that. See? And you guys can actually see the texture in on that. You guys see that? That is gorgeous. I like that a lot. So what we're going to do is we're going to measure out our one and a quarter inches and we're just going to boop, put a dot there and then at two and a half inches boop, put a dot there and then at 3.75 inches boop, that's what we do there okay and then we're going to do the same on the other side we're going to measure out one and a quarter and then two and a half 
and then 3.75 and we're going to do that on all four because once we do that we just measure across to try and make sure that our fingers are there and then what we're going to do is we're going to color in we're going to push down we're just going to make a little bit of a mark on all of the little blocks there. Now you guys can just make a little mark with a pen. Yeah, you guys can make a little mark with a pen. So you've got just a little bit of, little bit of scarring, a little bit of cracking. Okay. Ba boom, ba boom, and right here in the middle. Uh, boom, boom. Okay. And we're just gonna do that everywhere we make a little mark. Boom, boom, take it down there. Get about there. Boom, boom. And then dead in the middle. Boom. And then last one. Now, as you see, I'm kind of eyeballing it, but that's okay. As long as we got one, two, three, and one more. Boom, boom. Boom, boom, right in the middle, right there, so about there, and there, okay? So now we have our marks in the middle, and that's good, all right? So we've got all of these, we've got our little markings, and now, I got my black bomb, okay? Let's, uh, back up. Well, yeah, that's terrible. Slow pan. Slow pan. That's professional. Alright, so now I've got my black bomb. And again, my black bomb is nothing but cheap acrylic paint and PVA glue. Now, I use wood glue because it's $14 to $17 for a gallon. Um, the better stuff for this, I'm not gonna lie, is Mod Podge. Um, that stuff is great. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm using a cheap paintbrush from the dollar store because now I'm just trying to get that on there. And we're gonna cover. Okay, and if you're wondering why we're doing this step, it's real simple. Okay, um, doesn't take much, little lab will do ya. You know, just get the stuff on there. And the reason we're doing this is to coat and protect this. Also, we're priming it to accept our acrylic paint for later. Okay. And um, we're adding a little bit of protection from kids, pets, <laughs> um, ourselves, travel, you know, things like that. So. This is there. This is doing its thing. Okay? You guys have seen me do the black bombing and stuff before. You know? And there we go. We're gonna go on that. Alright, that's a little bit there. And the paint serves two purposes. One, gives us our base coat in black, which is pretty cool. Okay? And second, it shows us what spots we missed. And that is worth the price of admission. Right there. Ooh, look at that. Boom, boom. Yeah, so, you know, I use a cheap paintbrush. Um, as you guys know, I go to, like, my local dollar store bodega. You know, I hit up, like, not very fiscally enfranchised neighborhoods, and I do that for two reasons. One, they tend to have what I want. Um, and two, I like patronizing local business, and that's what's around. That's right, Vixen, we got black it all out! Black it out! Um, <laughs> you know, yeah, that, that's the whole gig on that. So we're going to set that aside, and we are going to let that dry, okay? So, once we let the black bomb, um, yeah, once we let the black bomb dry, then, um we'll be able to move on to the next step. But as you guys know, this show is in real time. 
which I like. I, 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 I just think it's a good idea. So I'm going to cover up my black bomb, and I'm going to write down, um, and we're going to go through this. Now, the next thing that we're going to work on is something that I freaking love, okay? And I mean that. I freaking love our next project. All right, our next project, our thing today, is real simple. Our thing today is we are working on cargo containers, okay? Because cargo containers are awesome, and why would we do something like cargo containers? Or sorry, why would we do cargo containers, Soder? I mean, they're just boxes. And boxes are pretty easy. Yes, they are. Ooh, did I not bring my knife? I did not bring my knife. Hmm. Well, look at that. I actually have to go and get my knife. Okay, so work on that. Um, we will be right back. All right, so while we're gone, um, I'm gonna put on our title card and bring a friend. I'll literally be back in maybe two minutes. So I'm gonna ask for you guys to show me a little bit of patience, just a little bit, because I'm serious. I straight up forgot my hobby knife. So I have to go to a different room and grab it, but I will be right back. There we go. Told you that wouldn't take too long. Ah! <laughs> Told you that wouldn't take too long. I just had to grab my hobby knife. Um, you know, I say hobby knife because I use it for hobbies. But really, it's a box cutter. That, that's really all it is. It's a, it's a bloody box cutter. And, um, you know, you use it to cut boxes. That's what you do. That's what it's there for. And, um, so yeah, as I was saying. Now, for this next bit, okay, let's get back to the table. Um, ooh, I said the table. There we go. Now, for this, like I said, we've got our uh, we've got our poster board, and we are making cargo containers. Like I said, now this little thing is one of my dungeon tiles. It's a two and a half inch dungeon tile because, like I said, I deal in inch and a quarter squares on pretty much everything I do. So what we are gonna do here is we're just gonna use this as a base template. And we are going to cut. There we go. Um, the reason that we do it that way is, um, you know, we could measure out two and a half inches and then and a half inches over here, but what I like to do is I know that these two sides are squared up with each other. So, since I have that, 
and I have this and I'm um, I'm sure you guys may have noticed that this is a scrap piece right okay so since we have that we can measure real quick two and a half inches two and a half boom now the awesome and true way to do this is of course take your pencil measure out two and a half inches and then take your pencil measure out two and a half inches and hang on yeah so this is what we're gonna do we are gonna square this up with the bottom hey look at that it was all off because yeah like I said I didn't sleep like at all last night and there we go. Now that's square and true. Square and true. So we now measure out a quick two and a half inches. Okay. Which is about here. And now we measure out about two and a half inches. Which is Connect. Connect the two marks with the ruler. Okay. And so we make the line. And we cut. Okay, I love having one of these cutting mats. These things are awesome. This was um, a gift from one of our patrons, good old Cart Google. Okay, now, now that we've got this home, okay, this is two and a half inches. And again, this will not be perfect. Um, yeah, there we go. Yeah, this is not going to be perfect. It's not going to be great. And guess what? The understructure doesn't really have to be perfect and great. I'm gonna turn this over to the white side so I can measure out just a couple because these things are so easy we're gonna make a couple so front inches there there so front back Seven and a half inches is the next one. And nine and a half inches. Nope. Seven and a half. Um, nine and a half is two more inches. And seven and a half. So ten inches. Ten inches solid. Hey, this was a ten inch piece. Cool. Okay. And then we're going to do the same on the opposite side. Because I am a snake head eating my head on the opposite side. Here we go. So, two and a half inches. At five inches, at seven and a half inches, and at ten inches. And now we just connect. Okay, we're gonna need two of these squares per cargo container. One. Two. Three cuts. Ooh, well, that's cool. Of course, I messed up the cut. Like I said, didn't sleep. And always remember safety, kids. Safety is very, very important. Okay, I got all that. And we're just gonna... There we go. Again, doesn't have to be exact, all right? So, now that we got that, we are gonna decide how long our cargo containers are gonna be. Now, this is a five inch 
template, like I said. And, yeah. Yeah, man. That works. Yeah, that works. So, yeah, five inches. Five inches. Is yeah. Um, yeah, so roughly five inches. So since this is a 10 inch thing, we are going to need three. Okay. Three of these things. Um, we're going to need three of these things per box. Technically, four of these things. So, just so happens that this one, I pulled out a five inch. I made it around five inches. So, we square this up here. Boom. And now, we're going to make the cut. Good. Actually, we're going to need four, which is fine. All right. So, yeah, around five or so inches. And we're going to make this roughly, just, just roughly, if this thing is two and a half. And again, I'm eyeballing. We don't need precise, exact, fantastic measurements. Okay. Um, I know there's a lot of crafters out there going, Arr, measure twice, cut once. Eh, you know, it ain't that critical. All right? I mean, it really isn't that critical. Um, so, yeah, we got about there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure out about two and a half inches because, again, I like the two and a half inch template. You know what? No. I'm going to measure this. Oh, oh, what am I doing? What am I doing? Oh my god, I'm crazy. Nah, nah. Yeah, two and a half. I'm going to measure this out to two and a half. Yeah. Two and a half by five. I was going to do something mad. And I'm talking absolutely mad. And then I decided not to. Okay. Um. But yeah. So, here we are now. Now, again, I like, um, the reason I'm choosing these measurements is because I know cargo containers, okay? I know these things like the back of my hand because, um, my day job, when I'm not filming these videos for you guys, is literally emptying. So, I spend a good chunk of my day inside these things, okay? So yeah, so roughly about this, okay, yeah, two, and so many people will tell you, you know, cut precise and don't do a lot of the stuff that I'm doing right now, it ain't that critical, alright? This is fun craft. So this counts as art. <laughs> okay, so as far as this is, now this one's a little shorter, and there's a reason for that. Okay, if it comes up a little shorter or a little off center, don't worry about it, because this stuff is cheap. I get a big old thing of it for a dollar. Okay, and I, I, I mean that. Just a buck. All right. Uh, let's check in on our black bomb. See, it's still, still drying. Got its thing going. So we're just gonna reactivate the glue, make sure it gets into the places it needs to get into, and um, you know, the thinner, the thinner the layer, the faster it's gonna go. Okay. I'm just barely touching it. But I want to get the blue layers very thin so I don't lose any of the awesome detail on the texture. Yeah, that's a lot. <laughs> that's, you know, I, I keep that on video. Okay. 
So, as I said, we're gonna wait for that stuff to dry. So now, now that we got these things, they're roughly about the same size. And notice I say roughly because this isn't, it doesn't have to be super duper uber precise. It really doesn't. Back. Boom. We've got, oh. <laughs> Look at that. So we've got these. We've got a few other pieces. I'm a big fan of templates. I really am. So, now that we've got these, we'll take another piece that's roughly 10 inches. And this is how I like to use my template. I like to do the best as I can to square up everything. And then, I take my ruler. Okay, where is my ruler? Ah. We should all spend some time to be a lot more organized than the cinematic sorcerer. Um, let's see, where did I put that thing? <laughs> All right. <sighs> ah, escape these chains of ice. For I have dined on honeydew. Hmm. Ah, there are so many things that go in. <clears throat> To this show. Live, everybody. Live. Hmm. Wow. This is really, really embarrassing. Um, I seem to have misplaced my ruler. Ah. Here it is. Oh. It dropped off my work table. So, uh, this thing happens. But, we are going to, um, we're going to take another really quick break. And by really quick break, I'm going to go get the types of glue that we can work with. And, um, and we're going to talk about that, okay? So, I will be right back, um, right after a little bit more. Told you we'd be back. So I figure now is a little bit of a time to talk about glue. Um, just a little bit, just a little bit, because I've got uh, a couple of different kinds of glue um, that I use, and that we have access to. Okay, and this is really important because not every glue does everything. All right. Um, 
you will see so many different crafters um, try and what can I put? Some of them end up getting pretty elitist when it comes to glue. Some of them are like, well, you have to use this type of glue or this, or, you know, never use this type of glue with this material, never use this with that, never use this with that. Let it go. There are times that you do need a specific type of glue and um, we're going to talk about that a little bit while I cut out more of these templates. Um, yeah, the types of glues that you can do come in so many different flavors and uses and all of that jazz. But what does it mean? Like, what does it mean? Why is it important? Why should we care? Okay. Well, it's very simple. Um, not all glues are created equal. And we talk about the triad a lot. Good, fast, cheap. Pick two. You can only have two. Two is it. That, that's what you got. Get two. No more than two. All right? Now, I craft quickly because I do this for fun and therapy. <laughs> you know, that is where I stand, okay? Um, a lot of other folks um, are real artists. Those are the people that I look at and I'm like, wow, you guys are like magic to me. Like, really. Um, so, there are ups and downs to everything that you want to do in regards to how you put stuff together. Because the more attention you pay, and the more patient you are with yourself, the better results you get. Okay. And I don't really want to sound like a Mr. Rogers wannabe, although I am a Mr. Rogers wannabe. Um, but when I'm doing my crafting and my painting and all that other stuff, sometimes I just want to be damn done with it. I really do. I just, I, I start to lose bandwidth. Um, and sometimes I just don't care enough. Um, and here's the thing. Since I'm not making $400 a day, doing this, I don't really have to care, alright, um, I put stuff together to play, and don't get me wrong, there are crafters and artists out there that are way better, way better than I ever, ever want to be, um, I have a friend who is just... Uh, what is it called? Eight Shades of Amazing as a crafter. Actually, I have a couple, and I say a couple because they share the same vocation. They are both blacksmiths, and their work is so type A, it hurts. <laughs> okay. um, it's so precise and so well crafted so well put together that I look at them and I'm just like guys you inspire me and at the same time um I never ever want to be that good <laughs> I don't that's not my bag um you know not all of us are built for that kind of thing and I'm happy for that but what I am trying to do right now is pump out a lot of stuff. Now, I love playing games, okay? I do, I love it. I, I love playing games, I love sitting down with my miniatures and going pew pew, pew pew, pew pew, pew pew, pew, pew. okay? And when I sit down with my miniatures to go pew pew pew, pew pew pew, um, 
here. There we go. Ooh. Yeah. When I sit down with my miniatures to go pew pew pew. Pew pew pew. Pew pew. I'm a spaceman. Um that fills me with joy. So I put this stuff together to go pew 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 pew. I'm a spaceman. Okay. That is where my enjoyment and my happiness comes from in regards to doing this stuff. So I'm good here. There we go. So we've got two good ones. And is this a decent one? This is a decent one. Okay. Now what I've done here is I've taken one of the one of the scrappy ones that I didn't do all that great of measuring with. Pulled out a template. I drew a line. I'm following that line. There we go. Following that line. And now I'm cutting that line. Cleaning everything up. Just so that things look kind of cool. A lot of places would cut away, but no, you gotta do this show in real time. Because I live cast. That's what I do. <laughs> and, um, yeah, there we go. So, yeah, we're just gonna boom, 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 boom. Take the pencil, make the lines, make sure everything stays square. Okay, take the ruler. Follow the line. Make the cut. That's three-ish. Oh. Look at that. So. I'm going to take the last part. Ah. So now what we have, or we have some that are that are a couple of millimeters short. Okay. So you know what we're gonna do? We're gonna get as much bang for our buck out of this project as we can. And we're gonna cut these a little bit shorter than five inches. Why? Because it doesn't matter. It just doesn't matter. When we put all this stuff together, believe it or not, it's gonna be a bit bigger. Um yeah, it's gonna be a bit bigger than five inches because numbers are real and measurements are real. Okay, I could, if I so chose, take my calipers and measure out the exact width of this and do the math and put everything together. But are you guys really here for that? Like seriously, are, are, are you really here? Is that something that you guys want? To watch me do? I really don't think so. But if I'm wrong, say something in the comments. You know, there we go. One, two. All the ones with the world mark. Boop, 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 boop. Yeah, there we are. So yeah, now we're gonna get this down. Now, one of the things that I try, 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 I really try to avoid is way over perfection okay i i can get in trouble with trying to perfect something okay um over perfection doesn't leave anywhere good or fun so these close enough not close enough for government work they actually demand a lot of precision so what we are going to do now for this is we are going to take four of them okay just four okay 
And we're gonna take the most fugly one and put that at the bottom. And now, oh, that's what we have to do because it wasn't square. Okay. Yeah, we're gonna take the fugliest one. We're gonna put it at the bottom. Gonna make sure that it's square and true. Look at that, square. Okay. Okay, we're gonna put all that stuff on the bottom. And now, we're gonna take our glue. Now this is my PVA glue, okay? That is straight up, um, straight up wood glue that I use for my black bomb. Okay, I use that for my black bomb and it has its purposes. Oh, wait, sorry. There we go, this is my PVA glue. I use this for my black bomb. It has its purposes, it does its thing. Okay, it takes a while to dry. This is my Gorilla Glue Gel. This is my favorite glue, favorite, favorite glue, because this does it quick. Okay, this is really, really, really quick glue. Um, it's super glue, and it's super glue that comes in a gel, but this thing costs six bucks, and it's never really full. Um, you can go through this really quickly. This is the Gorilla Glue liquid for when you don't really want a whole lot of, um, well, it, it, it's more runny. It's harder to control and it has its place. Um, you know, it, it really does. It has its place in crafting. Um, really good for putting miniatures together. Really good for sticking stuff together that um, you really need quick bond and you don't like clumping. Okay? And of course this is accelerant. Okay, this right here, this is Accelerate, Instaset Accelerate. Um, this costs, God, two ounces costs about five bucks. Um, it's a spray bottle. I don't use it as a spray bottle. I tend to use drops um, because I'm doing stuff. And this six bucks will last a long time if you don't spill it. <laughs> don't spill this stuff. Um, and of course, we've got our old standby. Hot glue. This stuff is also instantaneous and you don't have to deal with any other chemical stuff. So that's a big thing. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take some hot glue, okay? Because hot glue is the fastest. We're gonna take our fugly guy down here and we are going to do a little bit of a dab, a tiny bit of a dab with our hot glue. Now, I have a high temperature gun that I got from the hardware store, okay, um, and a lot of people in the craft community are very clear about crafting with things like hot glue, okay. Um, sometimes you want hot glue hot, sometimes you want high temperature, sometimes you want low temperature, um, the higher the temperature, the longer you will have to futz with whatever it is you're futzing with. Okay. That is the truth of the matter. So, now that we got that, see, we're putting the hot glue together, it's there, it's doing its thing. Now, if you notice, we are putting this together in sort of a cascade manner. Okay, and there's a reason for this. Since I have these two put together, um, ooh, this is my way of not really having to do a lot of measurements. Okay? Now that we've got these things together, we have a relatively square side. And this is where the good sheet comes in. Okay? Now that we have our real thing. Okay? Get our hot glue gun out of the way and make sure we don't burn ourselves. Okay, now that we've got this going, we can square up the corner. Make sure that the corner is nice and square. Boom. Okay, yeah, look at that. Nice and square corner. And now, once that corner is nice and square, 
we can take another wall, and as you can see, this one's on the inside. We put this one on the outside, keep it square, and it fits exactly what we need. So we're putting to get we're putting this together in sort of a fan. Okay. Now, the thing about the hot glue is this stuff is a bit dangerous in the sense that it's easy to burn yourself, so you have to be careful. Okay. Let's see, now look at this. Oh, okay, look at that. Right there, squared up. Done really quickly, okay, and now that we've kind of squared up this side, and uh, yeah, now that we've kind of squared up this side, put all this together. Now we can let this cool down for a hot minute. <laughs> all right, and because physics is physics. We are going to pop on our other thing. Okay. So this right here. Kaboom, kaboom. Yeah, da, 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 We now have a box. It's a simple box. It's an easy box. Ah! What have we learned about this box? Since this box is square, we've got a little bit fixing we gotta do because this thing isn't isn't sitting properly. We got a little bit of the gangsta. In. So Take that lane, and we just take our we take our knife. And we cut it down. Now I know what you guys are thinking or saying and all that stuff. Oh my god, that thing looks ugly. It's not a good box. It's not blah blah blah. And guess what? You're right. It doesn't have to be. Okay? Because we have another step with this. All right, we have a complete other step that we're going to be putting together with this thing. So, this box itself doesn't have to be great. What I'm going to do is, now that I've got this here, I'm going to make sure yeah, that it sits relatively flush with the ground. No, it's not totally 90. Don't have to be. Okay. Good. Now we're going to base it. So, now... Oh, now that we got this going. Now this isn't totally square. It's not 90 degrees. And again, it don't have to be. This is for toys. Okay. So now we're just going to, yeah, really put this on there. There we go. Put that on there. Make sure that this is boiling hot. Now once we get this on there, we're going to stick this down and bah. see, now it sits square. All right. Now, as soon as this dries, um, we'll have something good. Now, why do we wait until it dries? Because the next step. is cutting it off. Like I said, this right here, yeah, that's some good stuff. Now, we could do other stuff. We can add things around it. Um, but if you take a look, yay, we got a building or anything of the like, okay? I'm a big fan of multi-use stuff, but this right here is nice and standard. You know, we just made a box. Yay, we made a box. Um, now, why 
do... Why, why have we been playing it so fast? Anymore? I will tell you. Because... We are going... To be covering that box with this. This right here, my friends, is corrugated paper. Ooh, look at all that. Yeah, look at that. Ooh, yeah. All right, this right here is corrugated paper. And I got this from an art supply store for like, I got it on sale today. And um, so it being on sale made it to where it was, um, made it to where it was about a buck and a quarter per sheet, okay? Um, and that's important, okay? Buck and a quarter per sheet is important because this will give us more than what we need. But the next thing that we are gonna do, okay, is we're gonna measure out one of these things with our good old oatmeal packet. Love this stuff, super cheap, all right? So while we are waiting, for the hot glue to stop being so hot, we are gonna cut out some of this stuff, okay? Now, I happen to have a little piece of an office supply thing. So, at this point, we grab this, and like I said, we measured it out to about what? Two and a half inches? Okay, roughly around two and a half inches. This is important because um, now we know that this is square. There we go. That's out. So, so how are we gonna do this? Simple. Take our square side, take it up to about two and a half inches, and then we go zoinks, jinkies, all that jazz. Okay. And we take it here, back to two and a half inches. Two and a half, see I measure it right there. And then we cut one. And now we're gonna take this to one and a quarter, okay? One and a quarter. And one and a quarter, okay? That right there. These right here, are going to be our doors. Now the next thing that we are going to need is cladding. Okay? Um, cool. So we are going to measure this stuff out to roughly, and I mean just rough estimate, um, five-ish inches you know, five-ish, call it six inches, just to, you know, because as my old mentor used to say, you can always take away, but it's a pain to add more. And now that we've got this around, what, yeah, um, five inches plus, we're gonna take these and we are going to measure them to be about, uh, let's call it a quarter inch. Yeah, about a quarter inch. Let me zoom in here just a bit. Hang on. This is literally oatmeal that I found at the 99 cent only store. Uh, yeah, we're gonna call it about a quarter inch. Here. Uh, let's see. Four. Four. Oh. Okay. About a quarter inch. We're going to cut a bunch of them. Because we will need about, let's see. One, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. We're gonna need about a dozen. <clears throat> so we got these, and we're just gonna make our little strips. And I totally just spilled glue because these things do happen. So, where am I? Um, 
boom. So, hang on. I'm gonna make this a solid figure. Get three inches. Nope. Two and three quarter inches. Good. Good. There's that. <coughs> oh, that's right. Now, I got that. Okay. Boom. There we go. And once you find your groove, yeah, once you find your groove, ooh, that was a little too big, a little bit too big, yeah, this was a little bit too big, so we'll get back to that later. garden, dig it. There we go. You see what we got? We're just gonna keep on scoring. Keep on scoring. And grab some more. Some other oats. And boom. If you're wondering why I always do this squaring off thing, it's because when you're using garbage, um, yeah, when you're using garbage, things are not going to be in the best of um, conditions for a lot of the stuff that you want to use. But this show isn't about um, this show isn't about being perfect. This show is about taking what you got, making what you want. And uh, you know, this is the way we grew up. Now, one of the things I always recommend to people is learn to do stuff this way because um. They say it's a poor craftsman who blames his tools. I would argue that. Okay. I would seriously and truly argue that. And I'll tell you why. Um, I've been making stuff for a long, long time. Okay, I really have. I've been making stuff for a long time. And I will let you know, having good tools at my disposal is one of the many privileges that I have today that I never had. Um, a really good craftsman can do a lot of things with barely any tools. Let's get back to this container. Okay, now we're just gonna cut it. No big thing, just follow the contour yeah, follow the contour of the container to get it off of the base. See? Look at that. Boom, boom. Quick, dirty, you know. Some crafters would call this a speed build. Alright? But this is just to get it off the thing. Now, we got a box. Look at that. This is an awesome little box. Love this little box. Look at that. Look at that. Love this box. Okay. Now that we've got this little box, now we're going to take our corrugation cladding. And we are going to measure and mark. All right. Measure our cladding and mark it. Now, 
we're gonna roll this 90 degrees. Oh wait, my mistake. When we take our corrugation flag, you guys might notice that whenever you look at a cargo container, its striation marks always go up and down. So we're gonna take our base, right? And we're gonna start with one of the sides and we're gonna make our striations go across or should I say perpendicular okay so now we got that okay. and now we are going to measure the next side and now we're going to measure the next side good and we'll take our ruler because the striation marks on these things are really good measurement tools. We know that they are square and true. So we keep them there. And we just zip it. Now it's zipped. All right. Now you can use scissors for this. Uh, I'm a fan of using scissors, but since I like to make things, make sure that things are as square and true as possible, and I've got these great lines, I am going to take advantage of the great lines that I have here. Square up the store bought corner and tell the truth. Okay, yeah. Square up the store bought corner. Make it true. Okay. Square up the store bought corner. Square it up. Make it true. Look at all that. Alright? So the next thing that we're going to do is now we've got three. We don't need four. We really don't need four. But the next thing that we're going to do is we are going to take one of these, okay? We're going to take our box, and we are going to decide which one is the back, and then we are going to take this one that's the back, and just yeah, take this one that's the back, square it up, cut it out. There we go. Okay. I'm just going to try and make this a little more square, a little more true. Take my scissors, follow the lines. And uh, take my scissors and follow the lines. Why am I using two different cutting tools? To show you guys that, uh, again, you don't need specialized tools. All right. Now that I got all that stuff and I got my woo little box. All right. We're good on all that. And again, this box isn't perfectly square, isn't perfectly true. Um, I could fix it by just going here, cutting that down. But you guys see, you guys see right here what I'm doing? Okay, I'm just gonna, yeah, make that a bit square, cut that down. Good, that's lined up there. Yep. And just cut it all the way off. That's right. Cut everything all the way off. Okay. Why am I doing this? Because I want to sit a little better. Just a little. Yeah. That's it. So yeah, so look at that. Woohoo. Hey, hey. Yeah, just cutting it. Now, I'm gonna warn you guys right now, the condition that I'm in is called crafting jerk. All right, and what does that mean? It means I'm very tired. And when you're tired, 
there are a lot of mistakes that you end up accidentally making. Okay? Um, so in order to not be that, it's really good to take breaks. Okay? But I'm here with you guys today. Okay? And I'm with, you know, like Bucky Barnes, I'm with you till the end of the line. Okay, so yeah, we gonna do this today. So, now that I've fixed all that up, I've got a little box. What I'm gonna do now is I am going to um, fix this little box up just a little bit more. This is requiring a little more cutting. Um, Yeah, the major thing that this requires is to make sure that things are square. Okay? When things are square, they fit a lot more. God, I sound like a mason. Good. Now. Good. Good. Now we're gonna take this and we're gonna make a quick measurement here about there okay square it up yep nice and square boom and if you're wondering why I'm doing this, is because just to make sure that the box sits closer to what I want, I decided to do that. Okay. Just cut the box down a little bit to give it a little less of a warp. See? So now I can totally see where it's not squared up. And I'm just going to insert this in here after I cut this down a tiny bit. Good. Cut it down a tiny bit. Put it in there. Now, y'all don't have to be engineers to do this. Y'all don't even have to think like engineers. It really is just a matter of making it work. See? That works. That's in there. So now that we know that that works and that's in there, we're just going to take our glue, put a bead around it, and this will give us a little more space to work with for our corrugation. Okay. There we go. Now, boom. That's in there. We good. Look at that. Hey, hey. Little box, little box works. Okay, so now we're gonna take our corrugation cladding here. We're gonna measure out the top. And some folks would use a glue stick. What I like to do, okay, is I like to mix my glue mediums. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some of the spilled glue. I'm gonna cover the top with the glue. Okay, I'm gonna cover my surfaces with the wood glue. Okay, now this is going to cause a much stronger bond over the long term because this is Elmer's glue on crack. Okay, But then I'm going to take just a little strand of the hot glue and put it right across the top. Why? Because now my corrugation cladding will stick, and then as it dries, as the PVA or wood glue or whatever it is that you're using on this dries, it will stay forever. All right, and that is how we are going to work this. Okay. Again, the show is all about taking what you got, making what you want out of it. So, just a wood glue, 
Plop it on. It's fine. Okay. And now that you got good coverage on that, just add a few beads of the hot glue. Put this on there. And now, there we are. See? We have our little shunt. Now, I love this corrugated stuff. Okay, I do. Let's uh, see if we can get better shape. Okay. Because. There we go. Yeah. I love this stuff. Okay. But yeah, you see how all that not neatness was happening? And of course, now we have it nice and covered. See all these holes and gaps? It doesn't matter. It just doesn't matter. Because all that matters is that our substructure is strong or strong enough to hold a miniature and to play with. Okay? That's all. That's all we need. We just need it strong enough to hold a miniature. And again, um, we're not talking being Michelangelo. We're not. We're not. Um, we're not sculpting David. We're not doing anything on that level. We're putting together cargo containers. Oh, oh, oh. That's it. That is what we're doing. Now, if you guys are wondering why, there we are. Now, you see how we have a little bit of overlay there? Well, guess what? We just cut it off. Why? Because that's getting covered too. All right? <laughs> Again, it's all getting covered. It just doesn't matter. It just doesn't matter. It's all getting covered up. All getting covered up. So, last surface. See? Stick with me. I know you guys are like, oh, why didn't you get to this point earlier? And that's because I started from scratch. I didn't do any practice runs on this this week. Okay? No practice runs. Zero. Zilch. Okay? For realsies. Um, so now that's in. And now we are going to put our doors on. Okay, and our doors, we don't even need to do the same technique, but we're gonna, because it's fun. Okay, there we go. PVA glue. Hot glue. Thing. Okay. Now, um... Okay, so now we're going to take those. We know exactly what the top is because the top is covered by something, and that's awesome. So now we're going to take these, and we are going to set them up um, just a hair's breadth apart. Now, when you're using cardboard, you don't really need a whole lot of glue because of this stuff drinks glue. Oh my god, it drinks it up. So, art. Um, there we go. And if you notice, yeah, there's a little bit of overlap there, and we're just going to put that in. Okay? Now, remember all those little strips we made? Little strips. This is where um, we pull out a different kind of glue. Alright, so I'm going to pull out my gel, okay. and my gel is going to make really quick work of all this. Alright, so I'm going to take these cladding strips, and again, you don't have to be super duper uber precise. Remember this thick one? 
just gonna cut it down. Because these are cargo containers. We're gonna have figures standing on top of these things. It ain't a big deal. So, we're gonna start with our very even pieces. We know that these are square, we know that they're true. Okay? So, we are going to start with the top, take our glue and just, or take our scissors, and just cut down any extraneous stuff. There we go. I live in... Now, this corrugation cladding and this technique for, um, yeah, this technique for yeah I do sound effects okay um, this technique that we're using for this is very very important um, because look at that boom and now that I've got that on and it's relatively square it's gonna take a second to dry and then snap and then snap okay and now we're gonna do that along all the doors okay um now this technique boxes and corrugated paper you guys can use this for so many different techniques it is mind-boggling okay and by that I mean this is a cargo container this could also be a coffee shop a bodega um, any building a shanty town for your post-apocalyptic games um, any place in society that would use galvanized steel. Okay. That is what we are. That's kind of what we're mimicking. That's kind of where we're using this. Yeah, we're using this as galvanized steel. Okay. Um, well, we can use it as galvanized steel. Okay. And finally. Pop it at the bottom. Yeah. Okay. Because when we use galvanized steel, we use it for shanty towns. Um, we use it for um, trenches. We use it for for um, barriers and in industrial places like if you end up going to a junkyard or something you guys will see um, gray dull fences that look like this you know and so now with what we're doing we're going back to blue and we're starting here and we're just taking our gel Roughly measuring out, nope, too small. Um, roughly measuring out one of these things. And, um, yeah, it's about right. Yeah. See, you don't have to do anything stupidly complicated. You don't need super specialty tools. There's an oatmeal box. Yeah, uh, right now I'm using an oatmeal box and scissors. That's it. And boom. Cut. Next. More oatmeal box. More glue. And as you guys can see, I'm using the gel. Because it stays in place after I put it down. Okay. Again, this is my favorite glue. Although, make no mistake, it is possible to be like a little kid 
totally possible to be like a little kid and accidentally glue your fingers together. So be careful, you know, practice a little bit of, just a little bit of safety precautions out there. And now you guys see, how I said it just doesn't matter because we're covering all this stuff. It just doesn't matter. Now it's covered and some people are going to be like, well, I don't like it all goopy and you know, it doesn't look professional. I ain't a professional. Not anymore. And I don't do professional stuff for this show. Um, I really don't. This is rudimentary. This is 101. This right here is rainy day activities for families. You know, this is what you're telling your kid when you tell your kid to go play. Um, I first started doing stuff like this with trash when I was a kid, okay? Because my mom used to complain a lot. Blah, blah, blah. You're always asking me these questions. Blah, blah, blah. You should have better grades. Blah, blah, blah. You should do something constructive with your time. And I said, well, if I'm going to do something constructive with my time, I should construct something. And that is where I started doing this. Um, now make no mistake, there are lots of people out there that don't know how good they had it. In the sense of, when I was a kid, I didn't have model trains. Um, I didn't really learn how to do this properly until I was an adult. And I got a job at a special effects house. And that was interesting because my boss was a little bit of a soft R. Yeah, a little bit of a soft R. And he hated my name. And he was one of those people of, if you don't know exactly what you're doing, you shouldn't be here type guys. He is not a big fan of on-the-job training. Now, a lot of people, a lot of people will be like, well, yeah, if you can't do the job, you shouldn't have the job. Here's the thing with that, people. Um, that turns every single job, every single location into a legacy or a privileged situation. Because, you know, making models, making miniatures and stuff, um, I didn't have the resources to do that, and I didn't know where to start as a kid, okay? Um, and I talked with my mom about that not too long ago, and she wanted to do this for a living. My mom is a great artist, and she really wanted to do this for a living. Her problem was that where we lived, where she grew up, where we lived, where I grew up, um, she never even knew where to go to ask, you know, she never knew where to go to find out how to be a special effects person, and seriously, she wanted to work with the likes of Rick Baker and, um, Harry Housen, because she grew up watching monster movies, she loved Bella Lugosi and Universal Monster Pictures and stuff like that. That those were her jams. You know, now y'all see where I get it. But as far as how it's made, you know, she didn't know. But she can do these things. And she's very good at doing this stuff. Sometimes her and I have craft days. But I found out about these tools once I fought my way in to middle class California. And by, when I say fought my way in, there were a lot of people that wanted me out. I tell you that. Um, and so, when it comes to on the job training, okay, when it comes to the people that can do this because they grew up doing it, that's great. But if they're the only ones who folks say, well, those are the skill set that you had, and if you can't do the job, you shouldn't have the job. They forget 
that we used to have things like apprenticeships. And there was a time where people could go to a job and that job would teach them how to do that job. You know? Um, and this was before the days of, you know, you have to go to college or you don't need anything. And so I fought my way into this job and my boss just did not want me there. But there were a lot of other people on the job that did. Like they saw, hey, this guy is smart and he wants to learn. And he's passionate about this in a way that we don't see very many people passionate, um, especially in this field. Um, and I'm like, really? I'm like, how can you guys like not be passionate about this? This is awesome. And then I realized, as awesome as it was, it was still a job. And, uh, and with jobs come pressure and bosses and all that stuff. So I do that for fun with you guys on this show now. But also, make no mistake, I feel the pressure. I gotta come up with stuff to make for you guys every week. Uh, stuff to show you guys every week. That, um, hopefully will hold your attention. Sometimes it won't, and I'm aware of that. And other times it will, or other times I know people are gonna be like, well, why don't you do it like this? I know. <laughs> I know. Um, heck, right now... Oh, yeah. Well, hey, I'm glad you guys are still here. Like I said, in real time. Um, after I get done with this, I edit it down and all that jazz. But I am a professional. My skill set isn't all that high. And in truth, I'm glad it isn't. Because I hate gatekeeping. Even unintentional gatekeeping. So what I'm doing with you guys right now, today, is showing you that anybody can do this stuff. Anyone can learn. You know, I ain't great at it. I ain't this world-class special effects guy. In truth, I know some. You know, I know quite a few um, world-class special effects dudes that, oh my god, like, if, uh, if I were to tell you some of their work, like... Uh, yeah, I can name drop because it's my show. Um, dude by the name of Chris Dooley. You know, um, he does practical effects. He cannot stand CGI. Not because he thinks it looks bad, but he tends to short out electrical things. Um, and this dude, he is just, like, amazing. He does really cool stuff. And he understands that not everybody grew up doing this. You know, he's been one of my teachers and mentors in doing this stuff, and I always, always look forward to him looking at the stuff I do, you know, because it's nice when he says, dude, that's awesome, that's rad, you know, yeah, a lot of kids should be doing this stuff, it's really fun, it's fun, it's awesome, you get to play with toys, you know, but this whole idea of G-E-T, G-U-D, or go away, yeah, no, that ain't what we're, um, yeah, if, if they're playing the card of you have to be an expert to, um, come in, you know, they can put that card back in the deck, because I can tell you guys, I know people in my life that can make all of those people look terrible, you know, um, that's why I never, like, I don't comment on the quality of people's videos, because one of my dear, dear friends, I mean, I performed this dude's wedding, is an Emmy Award winning sound designer. So, I don't care how good my sound is, it's not as good as his. Uh, one of my dear friends is an Emmy Award winning animator. So, no matter what I draw, I'm not going to be as good as she is. <laughs> um, you know, I've got friends that get so many awards from people in their fields. Um, so this idea of get good so people on the internet will like you, that's gatekeeping. I don't dig. You know, I know there are some really talented dickers out there. See? Look at that. And we've just got just a few more. 
Um, if you're wondering why I'm going so long on this show, I am stuck kind of playing the Twitch game right now. Um, I've got to do a lot of hours, and this is the one show that I can talk with you guys a bit. I can ramble. We can make stuff. We can just have a grand old time. You know what I mean? And I'm all about having a grand old time. Now, this thing, uh, this thing is going to be funny because of, where are my oats? I got to cut some more um, oat straws. Uh, yeah, this is going to be fun because at the end of it, um, yeah, we still have to paint. But yeah, um, Twitch, you know, tells all of us you have to have, um, let's take a little bit of a break, you know. Just a little bit of a break from the crafting, or at least from the hand stuff, while I find the things I gotta find. Oh uh, yeah, Twitch let us know that we have to cast for X amount of hours. I think I have to hit like this 75 hour thing. So I'm crafting with you guys today, because I don't really feel like ranting about a D&D game. Um, and I could, I could, I could do that. Um, I thought about running a D&D &D game here on Twitch with a couple of people while we're still suffering this COVID-19 thing, but I'm also trying to respect the fact that some people are sick, some people um, are going through emotional stuff, and that tends to make people nervous when they're on camera. So, um... But I could show a couple of things, and I might just do that tomorrow. Um, yeah, tomorrow I may do that, because um, I have been running online games. And, but also, like I said, I'm very tired. I was, I was up all night. As you guys know, I'm watching the show. Um, I was in the Los Angeles riots in 1992. And there were a lot of things that were happening in the riots that looked very similar to a lot of things that I see day to day right now. And um, it does get to me after a while. Just a little bit. So I ended up being up on it. Which is why I'm rambly. I'm kind of in the painting jerk mode. Um, and I thought, I thought for just a half that. I would not have a show today. I'm like, I'm just too tired. I, I, I got people that want my help with a few things. And then I'm like, you know what? When people are talking to me about how to do a podcast, what's important, um, the number one thing I tell them is what I learned in school. And what I learned in school is one of my favorite songs and so well known that it's almost a cliche and that is the show must go on okay I make a promise to you guys every week that I'll be here and I do everything I can to keep that promise I'm not great at it but I'm trying to get better <laughs> I'm really trying to be better at keeping my promise of being here every week showing you guys how to craft and right now I'm not gonna say y'all need me more than ever but right now people are being told to, to remain indoors stay in their homes do all that jazz um so <clears throat> what a perfect time right so everything is just kind of lining up which is which is telling me you know you need to broadcast for more hours uh, you need to get more viewers, and I'm like, well, more viewers, I can't guarantee you, but I can guarantee you that I can broadcast for a few more hours. Um, and honestly, um, where we're at right now, we need more stuff to do. You know, after you've, you've watched everything on Hulu, we get to spend this time together. Like, if you guys are in the chat and you say something, to me, bring back WOS. <laughs> oh, y'all want me to run weekly one shots, huh? Oh, well, we'll talk about that. Um, <laughs> you know, um, that's a lot of work. 
you know. Um, if you guys don't know, um, one of we've experimented with a lot of shows on this channel. Um, or should I say with my company? A lot of shows, a lot of platforms. Um, we've been doing a lot. Hey, real quick, let's cut back to this. See, look. Ah, we've got a box. This is really starting to look like a, um, yeah, this is seriously starting to look like a cargo container. Okay? Yeah, so now, now we have to do some priming. And we're going to prime this thing real quick. Um, best part is since this is paper, at this point, the whole thing is covered in paper. So you don't have to worry at all about the foam being eaten up. Okay, so yeah, the paper. Um, so I'm gonna put a prime layer on this because I got some fun paints that we're gonna that we're gonna talk about today. Um, but like I was saying, if you guys um, you know like hanging with me, you know we can talk and all that stuff. But one of the things that we used to do on this channel is weekly one shot, which is I would reach out to some of my other nerd communities and I would ask the people who are interested in playing Dungeons and Dragons if they wanted to play Dungeons and Dragons um, and I would live cast it so you would be seeing a game in real time with new players asking questions because a lot of them weren't sure how to play and I wanted to do that because um, a lot of people are afraid of looking stupid okay and with this whole get good or get out you know um if people are afraid of not being an expert at stuff they've never done before then chances are they're not going to try and that don't sit right with me <laughs> yeah that don't sit right with me at all um that that ain't my job Okay, so I put together this show, Weekly One Shot, and we, um, I, I essentially taught people how to play 5th edition D&D. And people could watch, and they could watch people who know just as much or less than they do ask questions. And if people made, um, if people made fun of them, they also got to watch me come down on people. <laughs> like in a very Gordon Ramsay kind of way um, because I believe there's no such thing as a stupid question yeah, I, I, I really don't um, because if you don't know you don't know if you never learn you don't know and I'm always asking people who are smug about what they know well you know before you end up being this smug where do you learn hmm? you know and um, I had the show where people were doing that. My problem with the show was that um, I didn't have enough new players. I had a lot of people that were still stuck in the fear. And a lot of folks um, that I know like playing games, but they like being intoxicated more than they like playing games. So I try to keep the people on my shows uh, clean and sober during the show. You know, it's a it's an old thing. If somebody's high, they're not gonna listen, they're not gonna learn, and they're gonna do all those defense mechanisms that um that kinda take away from other people's experience. Like trying to be funny, uh interrupting people's turns, um trying to use a lot of bathos to cover their own discomfort. And that takes away from everyone. That that takes away from everybody. So, um, I'll be right back, um, cause I'm gonna prime this thing up real quick. It's only gonna take like a minute, you know, let me, okay, maybe two minutes, um, cause my painting station is off camera, and, um, yeah, you'll be able to hear it, but I'm gonna turn the music up, okay? I'm gonna turn the music up, you're gonna be able to hear it, and all that is gonna be fun, so we'll be right back. Thank you. 
Well, that'll teach me to keep the mic up, huh? <laughs> Alright, guys. Well, we're back. And it took a little bit longer because as I was priming that thing, I realized that our dungeon tile was ready to go. Okay, and there, that's it. The black bottle finally dried. 
So I had to get the rest of the panels and stuff together. So yeah, this is what we are going to do. First off. Yeah. So we've got a few different colors today. And I'll find the colors really big. Really important. And uh, let me know in the chat what color do you guys want the cargo container today? Red or blue? That is a very important question. So, what we've got is now we're going to paint this thing. And we are not the cargo container, we're going to paint these dungeon tiles. Okay? Now, these dungeon tiles, again, the painting part, relatively easy. And um, we're going to use a lot of the same techniques that we've been using for weeks. It's, it's the same stuff that we talk about all the time. And using these same techniques that we use all the time, um, we're getting a lot of bang for our buck, a lot of mileage. So let's head over to the station. Ooh. I said head over to the station. Here we go. So, here, right here, uh, what we've got is, um, again, these are just apple barrel. This is apple barrel brown oxide. Okay, let's go uh, zoom in. Just a little bit. Yeah, right. Okay, yeah, look at that. Yeah, we've got apple barrel brown oxide um, for our dark. Again, these are all apple barrel paints, um, except for what's Darius, Darius paints. And literally, this stuff is still like a buck and a quarter for two fluid ounces. Uh, country gray, and um, Caramello de Café. And those are the three colors that we're gonna be using. And real quick. You know, or yeah, so blue, red, or green, that's what we can do with cargo container. So, a bit. Here. All right. So now that we've got that going. Um, first thing that we're going to do is we're going to mix up some of the water dip, and I like to water dip into one of the heat containers. And we're going to mix up some of the brown, some of the super light gray, okay. and what we're going to do here is brown and gray. Get us kind of a dirty dish. And uh, what we are trying to do right now is we are trying to get this ready. We're trying to get away from the standard uh, gray flooring. It's very, very boring. And remember that. Standard gray flooring gets very, very boring. Okay, so we are going to add a little bit of brown to gray to make it. Okay. And see, now we have a little bit of a chocolate or base color. Okay. And again, it doesn't take much. Now, today we're going to make just a little bit of black wash. Well, let's see this, these cobblestone things, okay, this pavement. This is going to be very shade of brown. And I'm gonna add a little bit of red. Um give it a tiny bit of bricking. 
because bricks on paved stone are way, way more interesting at the end of the day. Bricks on paved stone are way more interesting at the end of the day than, um, than just playing red. Okay. I have a little bit of glare in the studio here, but yeah, so you guys see how that looks? Hey, what's going on, Nightmare, Nightmare Echo? So yeah, we are at the painting of dungeon tiles, and yeah, so again, we used a little bit of gray, dark brown, and black okay, to put all these things together. Right now, as that dries just a little bit, okay, see what we're doing here, we're just going in, mixing up a little bit, and just couple of ways. You're going to let that dry. Okay. And now, right back, to answer the question, what color will we like our color? I'm going to let you guys pick. Do we want red, blue, or green? Considering I see these things all the time since I live by a port, um, I know they come in a hundred colors. You know, they come in pans and browns and grays, you know, and we're just gonna let that dry just a little bit. Um, so yeah, we're gonna let that dry and um, seriously, let us know what color. Just say something in the chat. Um, who says there are any of those there? Uh, those here? What, the Nightmare Echoes? No, oh, there's a lot. Um, but yeah. So we're going to let this thing dry a little bit. Told you I'm doing this in real time. Um, and let's take a look because a lot of the times when we do this stuff, what is important is to have reference materials. A lot of people don't understand how awesome it is to have reference materials when you're doing this. Um, for those of you guys that are just getting in, uh, we're doing two crafts projects today because we don't like waiting for things to dry and doing nothing. So, um, so we are making cargo containers and we are making dungeon tiles. But yeah, so let's take a look. See those, the, oh, wait. Sorry about that. Yeah, right here. These cargo containers come in so many different colors. So many colors, so many colors. We've got oranges and greens and reds and blues. If we look over here, you know, we've got more oranges, more blues. Um, over here is a red one and a blue one. Sometimes they come in black. Um, yeah, see, we got little white ones. Um, so we have a lot of options. <laughs> a lot of options. Now, we're just doing the basic rudimentary ones. Um, we're not going to be adding a whole bunch of flash and, and gribbles and all that stuff. Um, but I wanted to put these together because I have PDFs of cargo containers. Okay? I have them. And with the ones that I have, um, you literally just print them, cut them, put them together. And those are great. But using this corrugated paper, um, we get to go one step beyond. Just one. One step beyond that. For about a buck. Um, you know, for about three dollars, we put together uh, some of these cargo container things, and we could do that. So I'm checking real quick. I'm checking the chat um, to see. Yep, we still got Vixen and Jen and or yeah. Uh, Quinjen, sorry, uh, Vixen and Quinjen and Nightmare Ago is here, so thanks for popping in. Um, I guess they left, but hey, it's okay. Um, and yeah, so while we're waiting for that to dry, 
I'm gonna black bomb a couple of others. Um, or at least five of a couple of others. Um, so yeah, but um, huh, we're in third level cooking. I don't even know what that means, but sure. Um, but yeah, so using these textures and colors and stuff like that, it gives you just a little bit more of an edge. You have toys that are a little bit better. Like, I don't know if you guys are like me, but, um, when I grew up, I had origami. I had lots and lots of paper, and I made, like, origami cranes and origami animals. I had frogs and dogs and, you know, I made lots and lots of stuff out of paper. And paper is flat. Now, some crafters will say, like, oh, we want this stuff to look a little more interesting. But what does that mean? Well, what that means is they want it to look a lot less like an elementary school project. Um, they want it to look like, well, a miniature, if you will, is a smaller version of something. Not a toy version, but a smaller something. Um, the bonsai in Japanese culture is a miniature tree. So they're literally sculpting a, um, what a full-size tree looks like from like half a mile away. Yeah. Um, and that's why it takes so long to master. And these are skills. Everybody's got to put in their 4,000 hours to master. You know? But again, for playing with toys, which is what I'm doing, okay, um, this does not take long. And just with a few tools, um, some crumpled up, um, like literally some crumpled up aluminum foil, um, a little roller and stuff like that. I mean, this stuff is really hard. And I'm thinking that this stuff don't um, Because, in all honesty, um, we talk a lot about your resources, right? You know, we look at stuff and it's like, oh my god, $25, good lord, $15, good lord. You know, one of my tools cost over $100. Uh, my 3D printer costed $300. And you really got to look at where that money goes and what it's for. I stress a lot over um, what we spend the Patreon on. I really do. Um, I went for a 3D printer because uh, there are a lot of free miniatures out there. And right now, the resin for the 3D printer um, costs like 15 to 30 bucks for a quart. But for that 15 to 30 bucks, I get so many miniatures that I can show you guys about. I mean, bugs, um, I'm able to make the Patreon goals of, um, little miniatures of the Cinematic Sorcerer, um, so that you guys can have me in your games, you know, even if it's as a bad guy or an effigy, um, and I can print pieces to go onto this terrain, so, you know, like, evaporators and, and other stuff like um like machinery um you know soda machines or print out little greebles that i can glue on to other things um to make play experiences a lot cooler and a lot more fun so that can get its money's worth but three hundred dollars is three hundred dollars and um uh, buying a lot of this stuff you know uh the foam cutter i love i love 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 the foam cutter um that we put together because um i can do these sculptures as we go along and i teach you more of these techniques we'll be able to make cooler and cooler things like entire castles you know entire castle places um entire buildings um, we could put together office buildings and stuff like that to play where it goes on. And making it ourselves, again, good, fast, cheap. Um, we put a little bit of elbow grease in this. And then we have these original pieces of art that are like, I made this. Um, since we don't have a color, since we don't have a color, um, chosen for the cargo container, y'all, 
I am going to pick for us, and I'm picking the color red. For our cargo container. I will be right back. Let's take a look at sort of letting the paint dry. Because it's almost dry. It's almost dry. But, yeah, these cargo containers are going for red. So, um, yeah, this thing is almost dry. It's almost ready for a dry paint. This here, um, our cargo container, um, now people say like let the primer dry overnight and all that jazz, and they're right, they're, they're right. You should really let primer um, do its thing, dry overnight, get really solid, but I'm not going to be here all night with you guys, and you guys aren't going to be here with me overnight. But what we're doing right now... <laughs> Yes, you were supposed to throw out a color. I asked, like, a few times. Chat's like, oh, I'm sorry, I left my keyboard. Were we supposed to throw out a color? Yeah, I'm like, cargo container, red or blue, or green, which one? Um, and no one said anything. Ah, uh, I get it, though. A lot of people don't want to be called out. Um, so, if you're willing to throw out a color, we'll do it in five, four, three, two, one. Go ahead and throw out a color. I'll wait. I'll wait. I'll wait. Uh, waiting for a color. Give me a color. Uh, okay, red. Oh, hey, Jason. Yellow, red. All right, we got a toss up between red and yellow. Well, I've got the red close. The yellow, I would have to leave here again to go get because it's not here in front of the camera. So it looks okay. All right, fine. It's like red. So we'll go red. We'll go red. All right. Uh, so we're going red with this thing. I just gotta open it. Yeah, I was I was like an inch away from going. Well, nobody picked. I'll pick blue because you know blue is my favorite color. <laughs> you know. But uh, yeah, here we go. All right. So we're gonna go red. All right. So I'm gonna go here. I am going to switch on over to here and we are going to take a look Ooh, there we go so you see this whole thing this is done it's it's it's, it's dry to the touch okay look at that nothing all right good so this is ready and again this i am making data <laughs> um so the first thing that we're going to do with this we're going to move our hopper over. And we are going to, we have the bottom here, as you can see, so we're just going to put this down. And we're just going to swap the paint on. Look at that. Red. Red everywhere. It don't take long. Like, seriously, what we're doing ain't that critical. Alright, and as you guys can see, I'm just putting it in there. Um, what I'm doing here is I have to stipple inside just a little bit, but mostly I'm painting with the grain of the corrugated paper. Okay? So to catch you guys up, the box that we made out of foam core, some cardboard from the oatmeal pa packet or you know, any cereal will do. I know some of y'all like Cap'n Crunch and Honey Nut Cheerios. I am mad at you. Okay. Some corrugated paper, and that's it. Now, if you guys can find boxes that are already these measurements, then that makes this a whole lot faster. Okay. A whole lot faster. See, there we go. Got a nice red side. Look at that. Now, we'll probably have to do a couple of coats because this paint is cheap. And this isn't like the stuff that you would use from the from miniatures from like the workshop or Vallejo or anything like that. This is literally $1 craft paint. I picked it up at my local fabric store. 
um, here in Long Beach. It's called Fabric Barn. It's still open, but I get the apple barrel from Joanne. She can pick it up at, at Michael's, and it's literally a buck and a quarter per bottle. And as you can see, it doesn't take a whole lot. And when I say water it down, we're going to put the water on a brush just to increase the flow. Yeah, look at that. Look at that. My, my, my. Yeah, look at what we're doing here. Woot! Okay. Now, I don't tend to paint the bottoms of things. Um, just so that I know what I'm doing. But, I do something with the bottom. And, this is going to be, I suppose, our featured product for this week. Now, this stuff... Um, use it outdoors. <laughs> Seriously. Um, but one of the things that I've always had a problem with with modular terrain is slippage. You know, um, it's, it's slippage has always been a problem. What is slippage? Well, you guys know. You make a thing, you put it on a board, somebody knocks the board, and then the thing goes slipping and sliding all over the table. You know, just slipping and sliding, slipping and sliding, switching and bailing, you know, type of thing. Um, yeah. Well, thanks. Yeah. The chat's like, hey, this is starting to look pretty good. And I'm like, yeah. You know, it doesn't take a whole lot of work. And again, if I had slept well last night, um, I plan on making like four or five of these things. So that I get a good glamour shot at the end of the episode. Um, but again, I was up all night and we're doing this stuff. I canceled the rest of my appointments for today so I can be here with you guys because this is therapeutic for me too. And I'm big on that. I'm big on therapy. So, yeah, and now I'm back. Yeah, look at that. And again, this is just, um, this is literally foam core board, you know, cut to roughly two and a half by five inches, um, and I made a box that's two and a half wide by two and a half inch tall by about five inches long. And I say about because I don't use exact measurements, okay? I really don't. I don't like using exact measurements. Now, we're going to do something that you guys um, are probably not expecting. Okay. We're going to do two coats. Okay. We're going to do two coats on this thing. But this second coat, oh man. You guys are going to be like, what is this madman doing? All right, what, what is this crazy person doing? What is he doing? I will tell you what I'm doing. For this second coat, okay. The second coat, we're gonna do something real wacky. You know what that second coat is? We're just gonna dab a tad bit of black. A bit of black and with the red. Darken it up a little. Okay. Just a little. Okay. Because no cargo container at all is perfectly up and out there. But, what we're going to do here, since we now have this, and we're going to do a quick second coat, because as you guys can see, it's a little blotchy, it's a little, and blotchy is good, blotchy is good, um, but I want a little bit more dirt, I want, I want a dirty cargo container, I want one that's used, so, we're just going to add a little bit of black in there, um, a little bit of black, a little bit of water, to just, and you see how I'm just giving it one or two passes, to just put a little bit of grime in there, just a little bit, okay, and this is before we, we're, uh, we are going to do a wash and all that stuff, but, we put the grime in underneath, and now some folks would put rust in there. And we're going to do that after we get some good grime. You know, we got to age this thing up. Um, one of the things that 
we are going to do with this is we have to give Carvo a personality. And by low personality, we're going to give a little bit of a logo. And I'm going to show you guys how to do that with corrugated paper. Because it's actually pretty cool. It's a really kind of a cool thing to do. Um, and it only takes a hot minute. Okay, so we're gonna let that go. We're gonna let that dry. Okay, done. So, look at that there. See? Now we got kind of a grimy cargo container here. And you could free. Okay, you could free hand, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna let this dry. And we're gonna come back to this. Now, notice I still have a little bit of red on this. Okay? That's good. Because now Take the red, and remember our little technique of mixing paint on a piece of paper for an easel? Okay. So we're going to take this and mix those two things together, and we are going to give just a light coat. Now, when I say a light coat, I mean, I'm going to use a dry brush touch, but the dry brush isn't totally dry. Okay, so, one. You guys see how that's coming out just a bit? We're barely touching it. Barely touching it. But now, we're turning these things into brick. Okay. Brick paved. Alright, yes! I know I'm a madman! Okay, this is pure freaking wizardry right here. Okay, pure wizardry. Look at this. Oh. Just a little bit here, okay? And see how I'm just kind of slopping it on? Just slopping it on. But that's really, that's really bringing out the texture, okay? And we're not done, okay? We're not done because once we look close, we can see some of those indentations that we made earlier. And as long as you have some kind of marking, some kind of marking, you can hide a grid in just about anything. Okay? So, yeah, you see where we're at now? Huh? See this? See this craziness? This, this madness? Okay, yeah, look at that. Oh, now. There we go. Wow, we've been at this for two and a half hours today. This is the kind of thing I have. But, again, we're not totally good. Now we're gonna take a little bit of that brown and a lot of that gray. Okay. A little bit of that brown, a lot of that gray. Because this is where we start with our dry brush. Now we're gonna dry brush. As you guys can see, I'm mixing it up. Now, bringing out the brush. Notice I haven't cleaned the brush at all. Okay, that is really important. It's important because, oh, we've got all these different shades in there. All these different shades, all these different possibilities. Because the whole thing about dry brushing is we're adding texture, but that texture is based on light sourcing, you know, like where does the light fall and what does it fall on? Most of the time, and you ready for this? Most of the time, the light falls on irregularities. Irregularities in the stones, irregularities in the street, you know. Y'all see that? And my brush is starting to run out of paint. Okay. Flip. Look at that. Oh. Oh yeah, look at that. Oh, oh my god. Oh, this is great. Okay. There we go. Now see, this reminds me of like the streets of 
on an old timey downtown, like on Main Street. You know, you might see it on like downtown Disney or Main Street in Disneyland, or like places with a bodega in the middle and a barbershop quartet. You know, there we go. Now you see, you see what we got here. Look at that. That's a tile. <laughs> right there. That is a tile. It's working. Isn't that fun? Alright. Now, we're going to take this same dry brushing. And we're going to do it on the dry parts of the carpet. Just to bring out a little bit of stuff. Okay. okay. Look at that. Oh. No waste. And it kind of cleans your brushes while it's trashing. Okay, yeah, look at that. Now, I told you guys that I was going to um, um, do it that way, right? So, we are going to take some cardboard real quick and a spare piece of our corrugated paper. Okay, yeah, there we go. And what we're going to do is we're going to cut out a piece of our corrugated paper and we are going to do something fun. Okay. We're going to... You know what? We're not even going to take a piece of paper. What we're going to do here is we're going to take our pencil. Ow. Ooh, sorry. All right, we're going to grab a pencil. And we are going to draw out just a basic thing. Um, just a basic letter. These are good. I like these. Actually, yeah. A Z is good. So we're going to draw out a Z. Okay, and we're going to make it a blocky Z. So, ah. Uh, yeah, a Z. Z. I can't draw that well. Know that. Okay. There we go. Draw that well. Good. Good. Now we have a Z. Now, if you guys notice, I'm drawing this on the back of our core gate paper. There's a very important reason for that. Get on the back of our paper. And that is what we're going to cut out. Good. 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 Now, what we're going to do with this Z is we're going to put a couple of Z's on the, um, on the thing, okay? But how are we going to do that, Soder? Uh, I'm glad you asked. What we're going to do is we are going to take just a little bit of our primer, okay? Yeah, two-in-one sandal primer. That's right, I use Rust-Oleum. Okay. And the reason that we did it on the back is because when you're using corrugated paper, it locks in with itself. Okay, look at that. It doesn't move. And that's important because as long as it doesn't move, yeah. We can put this thing together. Okay, as.
There we go. Less is more. See what we got? Heavy flow, light flow, a little dabble do ya. And so, yeah. So that's on top. <laughs> so, just a light spray. And a light spray. And why? Why am I doing it like this? Because I have terrible humor and I literally just put ZZ on top of a cargo container. So yes, I have ZZ on top. Google them, alright? Look it up. Ah. Alright. So there we go. That's it. Yeah. And again. A little dabble do ya. See, take it from someone who works with cargo containers. There is no way you can do these wrong. That's it. Look at that. Easy, easy, easy. Ha 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 ha. Yeah. Okay, and now comes the fun part. We are going to make a really, 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 really quick watch. And by really quick wash, I mean like a seriously, seriously quick wash. Because we need to finish this thing off. So we're gonna take some of our dirty, dirty water. Dirty, dirty water. Okay? And then we're gonna clean our brush. Okay? Look at that. Cleaning our brush and our dirty, dirty water. But now, we're gonna put like a brush full of black on our dirty, dirty brush. And we're gonna clean our brush. Do that one more time. Okay. And we're gonna do it one last time. A little bit of chunk. Right before a dirty, 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 dirty water. Okay. Now, see how we got a little bit of run? We just take a little bit of paper towel and we'll just soak that stuff up. Now, why are we doing it dirty? Well, that's easy, kids. We do it dirty so that ah, it really goes in. Now, when you're making your wash, when you're mixing it up, you can literally see it kind of stick, kind of not. I want just a little bit thicker of a wash. And again, um, it is a science. It is an art. It's a little bit of both. But yeah, so now that we've got dirty, dirty water, right? Dirty, dirty water. We're just going to take that and we're just going to rub that right in here. Okay. Now there are hundreds of ways that you can make wash. Um, you can use, like I do, sheep acrylic paint and uh, water. Uh, some people like to add dishwashing liquid to it. Um, and I find that really helps it flow into the cracks. Um, some folks like to use ink, and I do like to use ink. Um, but I have like really good inks that I've experimented. Thanks for the patience. And I'm still trying to trying to work them out. Okay. But if y'all look real close, y'all can see all them details. Okay, because all that black grip, all those pigments coming from that, that's going in there. So this is it. We just dry it and then we leave it alone. Okay? I'm just gonna leave it alone. And now we're gonna do the same thing with our cargo container. And this is the fun bit. We just go along the sides and we just let it fall. Okay? Notice how I'm just spanking this thing, stippling it just a little bit here, a little bit there. Okay? Now, like I said, I live um, not too far from the port of Costco. And when I'm not here making videos for you guys, 
I am inside these things, emptying them. You know, taking out the boxes, putting those boxes on pallets, putting those pallets on trucks. And then sending those trucks to the places that you buy stuff from. That is part of the job. This is why I like doing this. Okay? This is why I like being here today. Um, I'm going to touch up this red here. See? Again. No such thing as terrible mistakes. Just, yeah, there you go. Look at that. And that's it. That That's where we're at. You know, this is this is it. We got a great looking cargo container to put action figures on top of, or um, you know, not just action figures. You can put um, your miniatures on them. This stuff is good for um, things like Kill Team and um, Infinity and Justice League game from Night Model Games and um, Marvel Crisis Protocol. You know. But that's it. We've been here for two and a half hours. And from scratch, we have literally made a really cool dungeon tile where if I just focused on those. Now these five inch ones, um, I keep nine in the set. Um, so that I have, what, five, ten, fifteen inches by fifteen inches. That will do you for just about any scene that you put together. And these, I'm going to make like four or five more of these, probably today, just to knock off um, some steam. And um, yeah, um, check the Instagram. And I'm serious about this. Um, check the Instagram for the scenes that I put together. Um, I put this stuff on. Um, I put this stuff on the social media so that you guys can see the cool stuff I make. Like I said, see, it's all here. It's all here. You guys can see where my fingers got all messed up. Again, this is all real time. So in two and a half hours, I made a cargo container, made, you know, a little bit of things. You don't have to stick with Z's, but like I said, I can't draw. Um, so I put them on and yeah, this, this thing uh, will be ready for the board. Um, all I gotta do is spray some lacquer on it, um, or in my case, some uh, matte finish. Um, that I get from the store as soon as this dries, but honestly, unless, um, unless I have, you know, unless we start having a serious conversation, um, I don't really have a whole lot to talk to you guys about anymore. Like, we've been, <laughs> we've been talking all morning, and I appreciate that, and I appreciate you guys. So, thank you guys for sticking with me, um, for almost three hours today, but yeah, um, not a whole lot of conversation and stuff going on. I want to thank Chasen for showing up and of course um, All the other folks who came in of course clever little vixen is holding it down. I think uh, I think we might have like a really dedicated fan on that one. <laughs> um, And I want to thank all the people that stopped by um, Thank you guys for having us. Thank you for being here um, And yeah, that's the whole thing now if you guys have ideas for what you guys might want us to make on this show. I am all, I am totally down um, to talk with you guys about the stuff that you might want to um, have um, have us have us make, you know, because I try and keep it basic. I try and keep it so that you guys can follow along with us after this, because this, yeah, this thing, dude, all day. All right, just, just all day. Um, and again, this didn't come with a design. This, I, I didn't have to lay out any plans. Um, don't worry about it, man. Don't worry about that. Chasing sitting up like, oh, I lurk a lot more. But just look at the screen. Huh? Uh huh? We made this. Started here. Ended here. Anyone can do this. Anyone. You can. I can. I can't draw. I really can't. This. See these stencils? Right here? Yeah. This is the apex of my ability to do stuff like that. This is that. That's all I can do. Um,. I could probably learn, but I haven't actually decided to pay that much attention to doing so. But, got these, I showed you guys the cool little rollers, you know, yeah, look at that, oh, oh, look at that, oh yeah, that's a great little dungeon tile that we put together, and that is awesome. Um, but yeah, so send us, you know, just let us know what's the kind of stuff that you're thinking about making, 
um, some of the stuff that you might get. Um, if you guys wondering why I'm talking and uh, doing all this stuff, I'm trying to set up a little bit of shot. Um, my workstation here is it's trash. It is trash. It is trash. It looks bad. Okay, it looks really bad. Um, but if I do this properly, there we are. Keep it there. Um, bang bang. Cool. Yeah, that works. And yeah, um, you know, we'll have um, we can talk about these things. Put the stuff together. And, um, yeah, just send us an email. Talk to us about this stuff. Uh, let us know what you would like to see. But as I said, um, I always try and end our episodes with a little bit of a glamour shot. Um, I was having some problems today with our, um, I mean, some problems with our gear. We had a power up. And with our power outage, um, everything got reset. And then the computer was like, we gotta do upgrades. I'm like, oh, for real? That's one of the reasons I was late. And, you know, you start getting late, you start freaking out, you start forgetting stuff. Um, but yeah, so with all this, um, anybody who wants to see, we have our glamour shot for the day. So check it out. Ooh, look at that. trying to please you people. I'm always trying to please you. Why can't you just be happy? Why can't you be happy with what I give you? Um, I'm also trying to make it so that you guys don't see how messed up my office is. Okay, now we have a glamour shot. That works. That works a lot better. So yeah, um, but yeah, if you guys take a look right here. Yeah, see? We have all this stuff in here. There. Wide angle. I like wide angle. And yeah, all that. There we go. Good. Good. You know, black cat and a soldier being attacked by a bunch of aliens. Isn't that fun? Right on top of the cargo container that we just made. Isn't that fun? And I mean that. Fun. So yeah. So that is what we've got going today. And I really want to thank you guys for being here. So if you guys have any ideas for what you guys want us to make, um, send a letter. Um with the subject hobby haul just one um two back in the deck oh wait wrong one two back in the deck at gmail.com that's b-a-c-k-i-n-t-h-e-d-e-c-k at gmail.com um you know hit us up on instagram join our patreon do all of those things i want to give a super super shout out to um of course um our our royal patrons being Queen Shannon Lay, King um, Paul Mansfield, 
and of course our ace in the hole, Jennifer Kroll. That doesn't mean if you guys aren't on the $10 tier stuff that I haven't, if you guys are on the $10 or lower tiers, that don't mean I don't appreciate y'all. I do. Love all you guys. You guys help keep the doors up, doors open, help keep the lights on. You know, even when I'm trying to like laugh the whole neighborhood, my mom, as my mom used to say. But yeah, thank you guys for showing up. This means a lot. Uh, Thursdays, yeah, this is the show, right? <laughs> um, yeah, but I want I want to thank you guys for showing up to Hobby Hall. And remember, if anybody tells you guys that you can't like what you like or learn to do what you want to learn to do because of the circumstances of your birth, be it race, religion, creed, gender identity, sexual orientation, your disability, or your budget, you just tell them that we said to take any of those cards and put them back in the deck. This is Solar Gray, the Cinematic Source. We're saying thank you guys for joining me here in the Hobby Hall.